there are four main steps to the water cycle that you need to be familiar with. First, water evaporates, changing from liquid water into water vapor that goes into the air. Condensation forms clouds as the water vapor in the air condenses into tiny droplets of liquid water. Precipitation is what we call it when the water falls back down to earth, usually in the form of rain. And finally, water flows over land back into rivers, lakes, and streams in a process we call runoff. There it collects where it can evaporate again, continuing the water cycle. This diagram summarizes the water cycle, but one important part of the water cycle that's not shown in this diagram is the sun. It takes energy to evaporate water, and the sun provides that energy and keeps the water cycle going. When water evaporates, liquid water turns into water vapor and goes into the air. Solar energy is absorbed by water, causing it to evaporate. Whenever it looks like water just disappeared, it probably just evaporated. Energy from the sun keeps the water cycle going. That's because energy from the sun causes water to evaporate. And that water vapor goes up into the air and through the process of condensation turns into a cloud. Eventually that water falls back to earth in some form of precipitation, usually rain, and runoff carries that water back into bodies of water like the ocean where the sun makes it evaporate again. The sun causing water to evaporate over and over again is what keeps the water cycle going. One thing you're specifically supposed to learn is how the sun and the ocean interact in the water cycle. But the oceans are just where we find most of the water on earth. And heat from the sun causes water from the ocean to evaporate. You may notice that I keep saying that and that's because that's a very important fact for you to understand. It's energy from the sun, specifically heat energy from the sun, that causes water to evaporate and that keeps the water cycle going. Condensation is another important process in the water cycle. Water vapor condenses in the air to form clouds. Condensation occurs when water vapor turns into droplets of liquid water. So that means that clouds, which are formed by condensation, must be made of liquid water. And that's something that most people don't realize. Even though it's tiny, tiny, tiny droplets of water, it's still liquid water that makes up a cloud. So remember, clouds are formed by condensation. Whenever water falls back to Earth, as rain, sleet, snow, or hail, we call it precipitation. Rain is the most common form of precipitation, but sometimes the water freezes before it falls back to earth, and that's how we get sleet, snow, or hail. And runoff occurs as water flows across land and collects back in rivers, lakes, and oceans. So remember, it's energy from the sun that keeps the water cycle going. That heat from the sun causes evaporation to occur and liquid water turns into water vapor that goes into the air. Condensation forms clouds as water vapor turns back into tiny droplets of liquid water. That water falls back to earth as precipitation, usually in the form of rain and runoff carries that water across land back into lakes, rivers, and the ocean where it can evaporate again. I hope this video has helped you understand the water cycle a little better. Keep up the great work, and I'll see you next time.